And as reporters, we were free to cover it. But we were free to cover it in the sense that we were out in the coverage looking for the impact that the uh, managing director had on the viewers and the audience of the ABC. We were not there seeking regime change or a change in what the in, or trying to bring the ABC down. We were arguing very strongly that what was happening inside the ABC was for the detriment to the detriment of ABC audiences, and that is what distinguished the coverage. And as we've gone back and looked at several of the examples of things that were written then, there were, for example, stories written about uh, how horrified we were at the way in which Media Watch was being tampered with because the format that was serving audiences well uh, was being diminished by other approaches to covering, uh, to having a media watchdog program in the ABC. So, in a sense, we were covering it as critical friends. And the point we're making in this paper, and we've detailed it in, uh, inside the paper, is that that is a stark contrast to what's going on now. The ABC is covered in a very hostile way, and uh, we've gone about um, documenting some of those examples. There are recurring themes in their coverage. These include media watch, bias, overly generous conditions and salaries, the inappropriateness of government subsidies for what should be commercial media activities. There's the coverage, the ongoing coverage in a hostile way of the Australian network, the behaviour of individual presenters, the activities of the chaser team, tardiness in doing whatever the Australian considers to be the right thing, the ABC's coverage of the asylum seeker issue and the Snowden revelations, there's anger about lateness and weakness of public apologies and the composition of various programs. Uh, one insider at the newspaper told us while we were researching this that the Australian likes to ask questions, for example, why are there 40 people working on Media Watch when really what that uh, fails to understand is that uh, only a few of those people are core people of the Media Watch team, others are brought in to uh, assist on the program over time. One small example that we've documented of the ways in which the paper doesn't really give due weight to the reality of what's going on inside the ABC today. Uh, the, um, oh, look, I'll hand over, just uh, bearing in mind the fact right, that we're out of time. We're basically out of time, so... Okay. Yeah. Right. I'll make a, I'll sub on the run. coverage of it, on the run, coverage of the phone hacking issue. Um, need to say up front, covering an issue of this kind, this scale, is about the most difficult thing for a media company to do when it concerns itself. Uh, there has certainly been some good reporting in the paper about the issue, but after initial statements of regret about phone hacking, the newspaper has consistently sought to minimise discussion about the many disturbing issues arising from phone hacking and about the network of apparently improper influence between the company, various governments and the police force. Um, it's also attacked, by and large, uh, proposals for reform reforming the system of media accountability. Critics uh, in this context have been dealt with in two main ways. One is to attack them personally, I, I'm, and the examples here we have are David McKnight, uh, his book um, about Rupert Murdoch, a local uh, academic and journalist, and overseas uh, Tom Watson, who co-authored a book um, with Martin Hickman called Dial M for Murdoch. The third, the other method is to ignore the uh, critic, and I'm thinking here primarily of uh, Rodney Tiffin's exhaustive and fully documented and damning book about Rupert Murdoch that, as far as I can see, has been ignored in the newspaper, and yet I'm going to read quickly Tiffin's conclusion, sorry, and the Sydney Morning Herald and in The Age. Um, uh, the phone hacking and bribery scandal engulfing News Corp and some of its executives employ and employees is the biggest media-related scandal in the history of English-speaking democracies. The scandal is evidence that media power corrupts as much as any other power. It is an ingrained habit of mind for us to think of the press as a protector of democracy rather than a threat to it. It is just, a much, is just as much a part of making democracy work better to make media power accountable as it is to make government power accountable. And to conclude, I'll hand over to Andrew. So one paragraph to sum up. What are we saying? Well, the conclusion we're drawing is the Australian now is more likely to attack individuals and to adopt a sneering tone. It tends to pillory those who criticise News Corp, often regardless of the merits of the original criticism. And if the target of the attack responds, the newspaper floods the zone 
with increasingly tendentious nitpicking until even the most interested reader has lost sight of the original point of the debate. The whole soul-wearying process brings to mind an image of wrestling with a pig. The pig may enjoy it, but in the end, everyone and everything is covered in mud. The reputation for integrity of the media section then has dissolved, or at least is dissolving. The number of stories that could be fairly described as the work of a watchdog is far outnumbered by those that are the work of a lapdog and especially an attack dog. Thank you. Thank you. That's too easy. Um, very, yeah, interesting that, 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 you know, quite dramatic change really in just 25 years. Um, what, why? Why do you think? I mean, we, we have got the same proprietor. Um, we theoretically got the same culture to a great degree throughout that period. Why then are we seeing such a change? Well, I think the, um, the Australian in general has changed, and I think it probably reflects the, the approach of the current editorial team. It's different, and I think it's uh, made a decision that the Australian to be relevant and to have an audience and to carve out a space in the market has decided that this is the approach it wants to take. So uh, it's very much a deliberate strategy and approach. Yeah, um, I think that. If it spends its time attacking its rivals, uh, as it does, um, and often attacking the man rather than the new, as it does, um, how does it keep its content? Or is that, I suppose, the attribute of the decline in morale in their stats and perhaps the force of the agency? Um, well, I think there's two, possibly two things there. One would be I think the Fairfax uh, media organisation is much weaker now than it was when the media supplement began in 1999. And the other is that not returning the calls from someone from the Australian does not prevent them from writing a story about you. Um, so, yeah, that's what I would say. I wonder if David Armstrong, who was editor in chief under Fairfax, would have introduced just like to say something about his origins and objectives and, and whether there is anything you'd like to say, Dave, I know you have come to now, um, about the way in which you think as a, you know, now as somewhat um, distant observer, the, um, the second of the goal. Well, I'm not a bad distant observer, I'm very intrigued with so, um, so I'm not really trying to say that. What I'm trying to say about the most, the idea of us in the series um have a record of se section of record of the air on the media. Uh we have to be growing up and to criticize the company and criticize ourselves from time to time. Um, I'd like to think that they they should still survive in some ways. At least I think um marks marks on the page of criticize like the yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of house ads. Yeah. I'm listening and um, because I'm speaking tomorrow um, uh, in Paul Kelly, we're keeping a few thoughts in the vault. But the model for the media section was the Guardian yeah. media section, which was more than 32 pages, sometimes it ran to 64 or more. Yeah. Act full of UK wide media advertising. Yeah. And it never happened here. No. They wanted to knock off BNP, they wanted to knock off Ad News, they wanted to be the, the centre, uh, the employment centre yeah. in, in media, and it didn't happen. And I think that's the fundamental cause of what you can quite simply illustrate here as 32 page tabloid insert yeah. down to three, sometimes four pages run of book. Uh, the commercial case that they believed was there never materialised. No, absolutely granted. I don't think the reduction in size of the paper and the disappointment around advertising is the is the thing that drives the later content, the hostility we're talking about. They're obviously separate. No. So the commercial imperative fell apart. Yeah, I, I accept that, but a, a simple answer to yeah. this 
contraption that you so vividly 